I've purchased pretty much every single Apple product since 2017 because that's my job here on YouTube is to review Apple products, but there was always one product that I just never pulled the trigger on. The one product I never purchased and that was of course the Apple TV. It wasn't that it was too expensive because it definitely wasn't. 150 bucks is not gonna break the bank, but I just didn't see a point for it. I had a smart TV, I had all my streaming apps, everything worked perfectly fine on my smart TV. So I always told myself, why do I need an Apple TV? It doesn't make any sense for my current situation. Well, I caved and I bought the most recent Apple TV 4K. I've been using it for about five months now and I'm not gonna lie, it's completely changed my life in the living room. So immediately after setting up this Apple TV, which the setup process is seamless by the way, it's so Apple-like, but you know, I could just tell that I was using an Apple product. The interface was clean, the polished Siri remote, which now has USB-C, it felt amazing in the hand, and I had that familiar app store that I could go into to download my streaming apps like YouTube TV, Hulu, and Netflix. Oh, and no annoying ads popping up all over the screen. And when I turned the Apple TV on, I just pressed that Siri button, say exactly what I want to watch and it just happens. Play you on Netflix. So clearly Siri makes everything a breeze, but we have to give proper credit to the blazing fast A15 Bionic chip inside because it does also play a major role. So it makes for a buttery smooth experience throughout tvOS and unlike my smart TV or like a fire stick or really anything else out there, there is no lag. Even better, I can actually multitask and go in and out of applications without any type of hiccups or loading screens. I mean, anytime I try to go in one streaming app and into another, like on my smart TV or even on my Roku, it would just lag every single time. And with 128 gigs of internal storage, I can practically download as many apps as I want without having to worry about running out of space. And you could also throw these applications into folders just to keep things organized like you can on your iPhone. By the way, that 128 gigabytes of storage is not the base model 64 gigs is, but for just $20 more, you not only get double the storage, but you also get that gigabit ethernet port for much faster and more reliable connectivity, at least compared to Wi-Fi. So that $20 is well spent on the upgraded model. And speaking of the technicals, the Apple TV also has thread support and it acts as a home hub if you have multiple smart home devices compatible with HomeKit. This also means, of course, that you can check on your smart home devices from the Apple TV, just like you can on any other Apple product. Open blinds, close shades, Anyways, going back to some of the more main functions of this Apple TV. So we do have the Up Next shelf and that is super convenient. I love this Up Next shelf and it basically combines all the shows and movies you're watching from any different streaming platform so you can easily pick up where you left off. And pro tip, if you wanna get rid of all the Apple ads that take up the bulk of the real estate up top, you can change that in the top shelf settings. By the way, I'm loving Shrinking, the new Apple TV show. I'm so glad that it got renewed for a season two. Another pro tip and a really awesome feature for this Apple TV is the ability to calibrate your TV's colors with just your iPhone. And for my TV, this made a big difference in the color. It looked much better and it's likely just because I've messed with my color settings a lot over the years. So calibrating the color of your TV is cool, but what's even better is that you also have the option to match the dynamic range and frame rate so that you see every film as it was intended to be watched. This is such a killer feature and it's nice to not have have to go into a menu and consistently change the frame rate based on what you're watching. Let's go back to that new Siri remote because once you get the hang of this thing, you are never going to want to pick up another remote in your life. And here's a few reasons why. If you press the control center button, it takes you to the home screen or the Apple TV app, whichever you set inside of settings. You could also press it twice to invoke multitasking, which makes going back and forth between applications a breeze, and it's very similar to iOS. And if you hold on this button, it brings up the iPhone-like control Center, where you can check on your HomeKit devices, among many other options over there as well. And then the almighty Siri button. So as you saw at the beginning of this video, it can not only be used for navigating throughout tvOS, but it's also extremely useful for fast forwarding or rewinding a show. Fast forward 55 seconds. Boom, it does it just like that. Rewind at 22 seconds. You can use it for turning on captions. Turn on captions. And what I use it most for, searching. How to download any app you want on the Apple TV and show how good search works. 
The on-screen keyboard is honestly terrible. And while you can also use your phone as a remote, I'm usually more in a hurry to search. And that's what makes using Siri so much more convenient. Not to mention, it's extremely accurate. Like I found it to be, for some reason, more accurate than Siri on my phone, which makes no sense. Oh, and the wheel in the middle is touch sensitive. So I turn this off because I prefer to click down on the button, but touch surface tracking is enabled by default. So now let's talk audio because, well, I bought two HomePods and I honestly did not plan on keeping either one of them, especially because I had the original HomePod. But I've been completely blown away by how good they sound as my main TV speakers. That Dolby Atmos and spatial audio goodness combined with the amazing bass, the incredible treble, and being able to hear every word of dialogue in a show without the action scenes being overbearingly loud made me realize that these are gonna replace my soundbar for good. Not only do they sound better than my soundbar, but they also just look better and cleaner sitting next to the TV. Not to mention, there's no need to drill anything into the wall anytime in the future. So as you're starting to see, the more Apple devices you have, the better the Apple TV gets. That's kind of how Apple products work in general. But another great use case for another Apple product is if you have a pair of AirPods, you could also put those on and they connect right to your TV. You even get a pop-up up there in the top right corner, like you're on your Mac or something. But but this is great for if somebody's asleep in the next room over, but you want to watch your show or watch your movie or play games, you could just put your AirPods on and you get that great audio from the TV straight to your AirPods. And you could also share audio as well. So if you have two people with AirPods, you could share audio just like you can with music or movies on an iPhone. And let me just tell you, I've tried connecting my AirPods to my smart TV and just other streaming boxes, and it is a nightmare. There are so many bugs, disconnects, if you can even get it to connect in the first place. So being able to properly you know connect my airpods was a much bigger deal to me than it probably is to most of you guys i do also like how you have playback controls at all times in the control center of your iphone and since this apple tv does run an apple operating system tvos you are going to get consistent software updates so if a bug pops up you know or if there's a big security threat you're going to be protected because apple pushes out those software updates on a pretty consistent basis and you really can't say that for anything else on the market especially not my smart tv i've gotten software updates before but I don't really get any type of change log for what's been fixed or you know I'm just sure there are tons of vulnerabilities on that smart TV that's why I never feel safe putting in my password on there but with the Apple TV I feel safe because we do have those consistent software updates and it is an Apple operating system at the end of the day now a couple of other features that are unconventional for a TV set box but are very awesome are Apple Arcade and Apple Fitness Plus so I've gamed a little bit but I haven't really used Apple Fitness Plus I've probably should start using that a little bit more. But if you have an Apple Watch, Apple Fitness Plus is going to be amazing on the Apple TV just because they work so well together. And of course, all that data goes back to the health application automatically. And being able to play Apple Arcade games with a PS5 or Xbox controller is also something that you don't necessarily buy an Apple TV for, but it's just awesome that it's included. I have more fun with this than I probably should. Like I enjoy playing this more than my PS5, which is kind of crazy. So at the end of the day, at $150, I just just feel like this Apple TV 4K is the best ROI of really any Apple product I've personally ever purchased. I feel like the Apple products, they're usually expensive, so they're usually like just worth it. But to me, this Apple TV 4K is like, I feel like it's worth more than $150. I feel like my ROI from the $150 I spent on this has already been returned in the first like couple of weeks of using it, let alone five plus months later now that I'm just feeling like I should have paid more for that because I feel like it's made such a big difference in my TV and movie watching experience. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention the design. There's just so much to talk about with the Apple TV 4K, so much that I love that I forgot to talk about the design itself. And not because it only comes in this glossy black finish, I do wish it came in black but because for the first time on an apple tv it's completely fanless and because of that this box is about half the weight of the 2021 model with the fan inside and even though i do like to keep mine hidden it does look super sleek and modern sitting on a tv stand a desk or wherever you want to put it so all in all the apple tv has completely blown me away and i will never pull up the smart tv interface in my life ever again ever it's like going back to 1999 and that's how the smart TV interface on any modern smart TV compares to the Apple TV. It's just so much better on the Apple TV. Everything
everything loads faster. You know, you have the Siri remote where you can search with voice and it's actually accurate. And just so many additional features on top of that, including all these software updates and everything you get in the future. So I would say that if you've never had an Apple TV, and especially if you have other Apple products like an Apple Watch or an iPhone or really anything else from Apple, you should give the Apple TV a shot, especially if you were like me and you're just thinking, you know, what am I going to do with an Apple TV when I have a smart TV that has all those applications? Trust me, get out of that mindset. The Apple TV is awesome. Give it a try. I do think you'll love it. And if you currently have the Apple TV second generation, the one from 2021, I think it might even be worth it to upgrade to the new Apple TV because not only do you get that new fanless design where it weighs half the weight of the previous Apple TV, the one you currently have, but you also get that boost in performance. You also get HDR10 plus support and most importantly, that new Siri remote with USB-C. And again, like I mentioned earlier, on top of all of that, Apple also reduced the price. So 150 bucks, that's a steal. You could probably sell your second generation Apple TV and pay, you know, maybe 50 bucks extra or hundred less than hundred bucks extra for this new Apple TV. So I think it could even make for a decent upgrade over the second generation Apple TV, but it might be one of those scenarios where you just want to get the new one and put it in another room or maybe put the second generation Apple TV in another room and use the third gen Apple TV as your main TV set box. So those are my thoughts on the Apple TV 4k. Let me know what you think about it. Do you have an Apple TV now? Are you going to get one after watching this video? Let me know your thoughts down there in those comments below. If you enjoyed this video, I think you'll also enjoy this one right here. So make sure to check that out. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for more just like it.